CataractCoach.com. My ASCRS case number two, white cataract tricks. Let me show you this right here. Here's managing some capsular issues. And we've all seen this before. You go inside and wow, the capsule splits in a second. And now you've got a tough situation. Well, here's a case where a resident solving this by buzzing with a phaco probe, creating an opening, keeping the probe in the eye at a very high infusion pressure, 80 millimeters, 90 millimeters of mercury, etc. And now you can, with the other hand, an assistatome, create any kind of small irregular, as long as it's round for the rexus. As long as there are no loose edges, they'll run out. And at the end of the case, after the eye is already in the bag, that can be enlarged. Now here's another case of me operating. Look at the slow motion. Just a routine case cleaning up the capsule bag and there you go. Popped a hole in the posterior capsule. So what do we do here? Well, we fill it up with viscoelastic first. Don't let that eye collapse. And let me ask you now, what would be ideal? Ideal is going to be this case. And that's going to be same thing. You have a broken bag here, here during FACO. And our guest surgeon is Kathy McCabe here doing a great job filling it with viscoelastic and creating a posterior capsular rexus. So trying with the regular forceps to get a posterior rexus, not so easy sometimes. A couple of hints here, injecting some viscoelastic behind the posterior capsule rupture on top of the anterior hyaloid face. Here, moving that last piece of nucleus out of the way. And finally, using these specialized forceps, she's able to get a round posterior capsule rexus. Now, it can be any size, doesn't have to be centered, doesn't even have to be perfectly round as long as it's continuous. Now more viscoelastic goes in. The IOL now can actually go in the capsular bag. You have a posterior capsular rexus, but remember you also have intact anterior hyaloid face. Now you can just take out that last lens material. In this case, it's using the IA probe and using a second instrument to push it down the probe. And at the end of the case here, boy, you've got a really nice looking outcome. So let's try and see if we can do that for my case. At the end here, look at that double rexus, right? You see the anterior capsule rexus, there's the posterior one. Patient doesn't even need a yeah, capsulotomy now, right? All right, back to my case. So I'm gonna inject that viscoelastic just like I told you. I'm gonna make a second pair of because I know there's a little piece of cortex left. We'll get that out. And now here comes the lens in the bag. I was not able to get the posterior rexus done. So here I've got to put in this toric trifocal lens to match the patient's other eye and look what happens. Posterior capsule opens up more. Now that's okay. We still have a good amount of support on the capsule, plenty of support, plus the anterior hyaloid face is totally intact. So now notice sealing up the incision first before removing this elastic because you don't want that AC to collapse at all. So really seal it up and now remove viscoelastic and lower your settings. So drop your flow by 50%, so maybe 20 cc's a minute instead of 40. Lower the infusion pressure by about half also. And at the end of the case, again, don't let the AC collapse. And this patient had a beautiful outcome with the lens very well centered and well supported. As you know, the capsule shrink wrap down and be adhered to the remainder of the IOL optic and the haptics. And this lens will be stable the rest of the patient's life. There's no undue consequences from this. So try to get the posterior capsule rexus done if you have that anterior face intact at a posterior capsule break. If you can't, you can still proceed with the case. Remember, never put a single piece of acrylic lens in the sulcus. That's going to cause problems. Let me show you this case here too now. Here's an interesting case. You do a routine cataract case and look at the end of the case. What do you notice? Look at the right side of the screen here. That anterior capsule rim got broken. Now, there's a normal rex. Does that look good? So I'm not letting the AC collapse and also don't overfill the eye. Enough viscoelastic, but not overpressurized because you may cause that rip to extend to the posterior capsule, which you don't want. Again, it's a second eye. Patient's getting a toric trifocal lens. So I have to put this lens in and I have to put it in the bag. There is no option for sulcus placement. And so we'll get that in nice and easy. And now I'll get it in the position I want. And now again, to remove viscoelastic, let's take it down by 50% on the IA parameters there. Now, put the IA probe down. No, no, put it away. There you go. Get the BSS cannula. Let's seal up or hydrate the incisions first. Make the incisions a little more watertight. Now take out the viscoelastic. I'm not going to go behind the lens. I'm not going to pause the capsule. Just be nice and easy, be gentle here. And remember, don't let the AC collapse. You want to keep that lens in position. You want to keep the AC pressurized. 
So it's in one hand, in my left hand, now I'll switch to the BSS on a 27 gauge cannula, inject as I come out with the IA probe, and keep that eye nicely inflated. Do not let the AC collapse. And you can get out of Dodge. As the saying goes, get out of here without having any issues. A little angle sweep there at the end just to make sure there's uh, viscoelastic has been removed. Lens in pretty good position. Don't fidget with it too much. Let's leave well enough alone. And I'm happy to say this patient had a very nice outcome. So yes, you can and will run into capsular issues when you're doing surgery. And you want to make sure that you have the skill set and the pearls like these, these white cataract tricks, in order to finish the case successfully.